loves, it's Brianna. Today's video is a QA. and a I asked you guys over on Instagram what questions you had for me. So I'm gonna dive right in because there's a lot. All right, first question, Annabelle Neal 13 asks, what made you want to start blogging? Do any of your friends vlog too? I'll answer the first part. I wanted to start after I had my son Landon. I'd watched a bunch of pregnancy updates while I was pregnant with him and no one I followed had gone back to work or was working full time and I sort of felt lost and just wanted to be able to share my experience with other mommies out there who might be going back to work after maternity leave um, because it was really, really challenging. And I started this without ever realizing that this was something that could turn into an actual business for me. It was totally a fun side hobby. My undergrad was broadcast journalism and because I did Teach for America and at the time I had my son, I was working for a public school district so I was doing things totally unrelated. This was a really nice creative outlet for me. And I figured, God forbid, house burns down or anything like that, at least home videos and memories could be logged on YouTube. So that was the original reason why I got started and it has just turned into something way cooler and way bigger than I ever expected. So it's been really, really cool. And to answer that second part then, do you have friends who did this? I actually had a couple of girls that I knew who started YouTube before I ever did, same thing. They were capturing their pregnancies. And Maddie B, TTC, and Micah Stoffer are the two girls that I'm talking about. Oh my God, Coley. <laughs> Honey, come here. Oh, come here. Guys, she's like embarrassed. I feel so bad. Did you see that? I need to go get her. Oh my God, poor Coley. Okay, she's safe now, guys. But friends from vlogging. Being a YouTuber, I've gotten to connect with so many other YouTubers that I just feel so, so lucky that I get to call my friends now. Tara Henderson is definitely like my YouTube best friend. But I've met so many other amazing YouTubers through this too. Liza Adele, Tiffany Beeston, Erin Williams, Krista Bowman Ruth, Kimberly, who's Style Mom XO, Emily, Mama from Scratch, Love Meg, Paige Danielle. I got to meet up with Haley Page when we got to see my sister in Charleston. Another up and coming YouTuber, Amy Darley, is just like the sweetest. We text all of the time. Wonderfully, Allie. Pretty much anybody that I've ever collaborated with on my channel. Sorry, in the moment, I feel like there's definitely people I'm leaving out that I consider my YouTube girl crew. So I'm so sorry <laughs> if I forgot someone. But I feel like that's what's been really, really amazing about YouTube is I've got to connect with just amazing people all over the country and what's even cooler since one we travel as a family on vacation as much as we can but then because of my work travel i've actually gotten the opportunity to meet up with a lot of these youtubers if they're not based here in cleveland or in ohio where i am Suze will 72 how much time does it take you to get fully ready in the morning if i don't have to wash my hair i honestly can get ready in under 10 minutes if i have to take a shower and wash my hair then it takes me usually like 50 minutes Emily M's 94, what are your tips, advice on having a successful and healthy relationship? I definitely believe in getting to know each other's love languages. I made a video about that. I think it's really important to know how your partner receives love, how you yourself receive love, and how you then can communicate better with one another. For Adam and I, we have a roller coaster of a relationship, just I think like anyone does. Not every day is perfect, just being brutally honest. And I know it's not something I talk about too much on my channel, but marriage is really hard work. Just like parenting is really hard work. I think you have to go into it with the mentality of, I have to work really hard at this. This is not something that's going to come easy or naturally. Are there days when it is a lot easier and it's super, super fun? Of course. But I think any relationship, you should just expect every day to be really hard. Um, and that's personally, I think my outlook on life. Like I, I, I like challenges. I like go into everything ready for a challenge. And if something does happen to be easier, then that's great and it's sweet and it's awesome. But I expect to have to work really, really hard at everything. So when it comes to relationship, communication is definitely big for me and Adam. When I think about the days when it's not a great day, it's usually because we just haven't been as nice to each other in our communication. So I think for me, it's like pausing, breathing, making sure he feels respected, making sure I feel respected. And if in any way that I don't, being able to communicate that to him of like, hey, this didn't sit well with me or like, I didn't like this or here's how I'm feeling right now and like why this was completely the wrong way of approaching it and trying to just be really 
proactive in communicating that than letting things fester inside because I also think that's when stuff gets really bad is when you let things build up and build up and erupt um, instead of sort of saying in the moment or preemptively like, I'm having a rough day already, so like if you can be just extra kind to me today, I really, really need it. <laughs> Paige Sprodlin asked, I've been a stay-at-home mom for a year and I'm returning to work in two weeks. What tips, advice do you have for a full-time working mom? My daughter turned one in March. I'm dreading the daycare transition. Paige, I'm really sorry. I cannot, like, it just, it's so hard. I feel for you. My heart is out there with you. Um, my biggest things that I would say for the transition is just practice that morning routine with your little one before the actual first day for a week, just so she gets kind of used to, I'm sorry, I'm assuming it's a girl. Yes, daughter. <laughs> um, but I would just practice that with her so that she feels a bit more normal and doesn't feel like, oh, like maybe even if you're not going to the actual daycare, you still get in the car and go somewhere. So she gets used to that, okay, in the mornings now, I'm gonna get dressed, have breakfast, get in the car and go somewhere. Um, and I would just explain to her, I think we always think that just because kids can't say things back to us the way we'd say it, that they don't get it and they actually can totally understand if you explain things to them. So I would explain that to her about, mommy has to go back to work, so during the day, you're gonna get to go to daycare, and it should be really fun for you because you're gonna meet up with other kids, but you don't have to worry, mommy will come back at the end of the day, and I'll pick you up then. I was reading an article that one of the biggest things you should say to your little one, if you're ever leaving them, is just like, I'll come back for you. Because um, <laughs> oftentimes, little ones, and I think if you, read any child development books, it takes them a little bit to even understand the concept of like, oh, just because something's behind a door means that it's still there, it hasn't disappeared forever. So oftentimes they can think if you're gone, you've disappeared forever. And that could be really traumatizing morning after morning. So I would just say, explain to your little one, mommy's gonna be back, mommy's gonna be here at work, this is where you'll be during the day, and then mommy will come back and get you again. Amy Lynn 1016, skincare favorites, makeup favorites, and more about your eyelashes. I feel like I could do a whole video on this. I would say overall Bare Minerals is the best for my skin as far as foundation and powders. I love Too Faced for eyeshadow palettes and any kind of bronzer or illuminator. And then I really like drugstore brand products for lipsticks. Like I like NYX, I like L'Oreal. I like Revlon and my eyelashes. <laughs> These have been an addiction since I was pregnant with Landon. I have a fabulous, fabulous girl who's been doing them the entire time. I like them because as long as my skin is good, I feel like I actually don't need to put on makeup. So if I do have to run an errand or even on really busy mornings for work, <laughs> and ask my coworkers, I usually don't look like this when we're on <laughs> WebExes and those things. Um, but I really like the lashes because I just feel like it's a little break for me. It's an hour away every three to four weeks that I have some time to myself, some me time. And then it's really easy to maintain as long as you don't rub a towel over them when you're washing your face. Um, just the first 48 hours, you don't get them wet. So I'd be extra cautious if I was in the shower or anything like that right after I get them done. But then I feel like it looks like you're made up pretty much every day without having to do much. Bree Chilton 23. Hi there, Brianna. How do you keep your hair looking amazing all the time? Thanks, lovely. Oh my, that's so sweet of you. I think my hair is one of the things, if I tell you self-conscious, and right now very self-conscious about just because of postpartum. I've like even tried parting it a little bit differently because I have all along my hairline, it's just completely broken off in these <laughs> crazy wispies. So thank you. A couple of hair care tips that I think was really great. If anybody follows Amber Filler up, her blog is Barefoot Blonde. Over the summer, she did a Barefoot Blonde challenge where you would only put heat on your hair once every seven days. And because I was on maternity leave, I did it. And even though my hair looked a little crazy, it looked a little bit ratchet, <laughs> I thought the days where I didn't use the heat or it wasn't like the day after I used heat. Um, afterwards, my hair was so much healthier. So if you could for a month to two months commit to, okay, I'm only gonna put heat on my hair one time the entire week, it truly made a world of difference to my hair. And I think just like the shininess and it made it feel so much softer. Marissa Paglin Awan, can you describe a little more as to what you do for work? I think we could collab on something for recruiting. 
Oh cool, you must be a recruiter too. But yeah, I work for Teach for America. I'm a managing director, so I manage a team of recruitment managers and recruitment associates who recruit teachers for low-income schools on different college campuses, mainly all located on the East Coast, which is why I end up having to travel for work. Actually, my very first job after my undergrad and grad school, I was a Teach for America Corps member and taught seventh grade English in Baltimore for two years. So. I actually started off as a core member, joined the recruitment team, then after that as a recruitment manager. I ended up working in HR at the school district here in Cleveland. So now I'm in the managing director role overseeing a team of recruiters. And I love what I get to do. I think education, if we can fix a lot of the problems in education, we can affect so many other places in society where there's just injustices and inequities, whether it's healthcare, whether it's the legal system, there are just so many things that education is the root of helping to solve. And I firmly believe every child, no matter what socioeconomic status they are born into, deserves a quality education from kindergarten through college if they choose to do so. And it's just really, really unfortunate. The statistic right now is still one in 10 low income kids graduates from college. And it's truly reverse if you are Growing up in an affluent household, your likelihood of graduating from college is 9 out of 10. So just the odds are against kids growing up in poverty, and I think that's extremely unfair because there's no such talent gap. Like Every child is so talented and wants to succeed, but the system just kind of holds back people from low-income backgrounds. And yeah, I'm kind of going off about it. I really just need to make an entire dedicated video about I feel like my Teach for America experience, but I would definitely encourage anyone, um, even though a lot of our core members come straight out of undergrad, we definitely do have some career changers and there's an entire recruitment team actually that talks to professionals. So I'll have the link in the description box below if you wanna check out Teach for America because I really do think like if you are committed to trying to fight for educational equity in our country and you wanna do that by leading a classroom, it could be a really cool program for you to explore becoming a part of. Um, I'll have that linked in the description box. Christy Girl 765 what's your favorite restaurant to eat at in Cleveland? Love you. Oh, love you too. I think I'd have to say Barrio. Their tacos, margaritas, they have the best guacamole. There's always this queso they have around Thanksgiving that has green bean casserole in it. That's one of my favorites. Um, really, really good. And you can make your own. The Coca-Cola marinated steak is so good on a taco. So if you try out Barrio definitely try that. Brie Loomis asked, did either kids have a lip or tongue tie? No, neither of my babies had it, but I definitely heard a lot of other mamas express that they feel like that's why they had some troubles with breastfeeding. So make sure you check with your doctor about that mamas. Sinead B5, what do you use to whiten your teeth? I actually just drink my, all of my coffee out of a straw just so I try to prevent those stains. Drinking red wine though definitely doesn't help because I don't drink that out of a straw. Elena Bell, I'm a younger mom and none of my friends have little ones. So you really are my biggest mom inspiration. I have to travel for my job as well. So hard. Um, and I want to know how you balance it all and still find time to do YouTube. I struggle to keep my house clean and I constantly feel like I'm giving my family the short end of the stick because I spend so much time working. How do you find time to be successful at your job and spend the quality time with your family without being completely exhausted? Whew, okay, there's a lot there. Just now, there are so many days, actually more days than not, that I do not have this all together, where I definitely feel like I'm failing um, at my job, at being a mom, at being a wife, at keeping my house clean. So just know that. Um, what I would say though, as far as YouTube, YouTube makes me so happy. It is such a passion and I think there's so many quotes out there about when you find something that you're passionate about or if you find something that doesn't feel like work, um, that's like the best job ever and that's really how I feel about YouTube. Like I have always done this and that is something that I ever thought would be a business or a full-time thing. I do it because I genuinely love it. Like I love editing, I love filming, I love being creative. And it's an added bonus that then I get to connect with amazing people like you who understand exactly the shoes that I'm in, right? Um, so just know, like, I definitely have days when I'm failing, 
I would just say putting yourself out there on a platform like this, I do it because I want to help people. So even though I've definitely shared moments, you guys, where I'm frustrated, where I'm struggling, or things that have been a challenge for me, when I learn tips, tricks, hacks, ways to do things better, I try to share all of that with you guys, knowing that if you are in the same place, maybe if you do something like this, it could make your life better too, because it's made my life better. But just know it's usually like I've gone through challenge or I've probably cried about something that then I end up talking about later when I come to a solution, just because I want to share helpful things and I want to make people's lives better and I want to make women feel empowered that if you are in the situation where you can't stay home with your baby, and I've said this statistic in another video, but 70% of mamas in the US with kids under 18 are working. So a lot of us are in the position where I can't be a stay at home mom. That wouldn't work for our home and the lifestyle that we want for our little ones. So that's where I know there's a lot of other working mamas out there in this boat that I just want to try to share. Hey, not every day is perfect, but when I've had really good days, here are the things that have made my life easier, have made all of this possible. Amanda Gerald asked, how did you and Adam meet and how did he propose? So my best friend from middle school met his best friend from middle school when all three of them were at college together. So the first time I met Adam, I was a freshman in college and it was completely innocent. Like we just all went out one of the nights there. Um, he did actually end up holding my hand on the way back though, but we didn't kiss or anything like that. Flash forward five years later, our friends got married. We were both in the wedding party, bridesmaid and groomsmen, and we ended up kissing in the coat closet at the end of their reception. And I was living in Baltimore at the time teaching, and he asked me out on a date for that Monday night and I turned him down. I was like, I moved back to Baltimore in a week. It's pointless. And he's like, I don't care. Just let me take you out on one date. And that Monday date turned into a date Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, until I went back on Saturday. And we did long distance for a year and I ended up moving back to Cleveland. And you know, the rest is history. Engaged, married, Landon, Presley, and a pouch. This is hilarious. If you can marry one celebrity, who would it be? Sorry, Adam. I think I would pick Brody Jenner. I find him to be, honestly, like the most attractive human on the planet. Chanel Angelina asks, what is your secret to a successful marriage? What are your best relationship tips? Love you so much. Love you too. Um, I kind of talked about relationship tips, but I would just say marriage tips, you know, spice it up every now and then. <laughs> Estu 1103, when could you do another clothing haul? I love, love, love your clothing hauls. Well, I've got some other clothing hauls for vacations coming up on my channel, so stay tuned for that. Deshaun Gomez, what was your Teach for America experience like? I recently accepted my offer and I'm so nervous for Institute. Love your videos. I really need to do a dedicated video to this. One, congratulations. Um, it is an honor to get in. Um, I like. I literally sometimes don't know how I made it through. Now that I know the admissions model, I'm like, wow, thank the Lord I got accepted. Um, Institute is definitely a ton of hard work. Go into it with the mindset that this is going to be a huge challenge, some of the hardest work you've ever done, but be absorbent like a sponge to all of the knowledge that you'll get. Apply it when you get to student teach over the summer, and that will set you up to be really successful in the fall. Um, and one of the biggest things that I think just being you know, a young 22 year old when I was doing the core, um, it was intimidating a little bit for me to reach out to parents initially, but reach out to every single parent those first few days that you're in your classroom, build a relationship with them because the parent involvement in my classroom changed things dramatically for what I was able then to do with my students, support on field trips, support on after school activities. It just made a world of difference. Um, so get the parents involved in your classroom. And it's super easy to do with texting too. Like every parent will text you and it makes your life so much easier. Pink Sugar 311 asked, do you ever think you'll be a stay at home mom? I think God forbid if something really serious changed in my caregiver situation, cause I think part of the reason I just mentally am okay with the amount of travel my job currently requires me to do is cause Gigi helps with the kids. Um, I think like that's the only time when I'd probably have to really reevaluate how that would work with just the amount of travel that my current job requires me to do. Jalen Moss, have you ever been told you look like a specific celebrity? 
When I was younger, Jessica Alba, and that was the biggest compliment on the planet. Ellen Whitey, would you ever want to visit London? We love you here. Oh, yes. London is completely on my bucket list. I cannot wait. I'll have to let you guys know if we can plan a trip and you have to give me all of your suggestions on what I need to do and see. Crazy fun mom life. If you could tell your daughter one important piece of advice while she's in her teens, what would it be? Don't ever hide your accomplishments and be yourself. Don't let your friends or your peers ever pressure you into something you don't want to do that you're not comfortable doing and don't ever make them feel like you shouldn't be proud of something that makes you unique and makes you really special. Katie Caswell, how does your husband cope with you traveling for work? Does he follow the same routines with Landon and Prezi while you are away? Honestly, my husband's amazing. I really couldn't do any of this stuff without him. Even right now, he's like hanging out with Landon, Presley's napping so that I can film this video. I love him to pieces. And yeah, he sticks to pretty much the same routine. I think he always knows what the routines are when I'm here and he sticks to them. So he's an awesome dad. I truly mean it. He's the best dad ever. That's why I gotta talk him into having more kids. <laughs> He's the best dad ever and he makes really cute babies. Lix Rio, how do you take care of yourself emotionally, physically with having two kiddos and a busy, productive lifestyle? Thank you so much. It's finding the little hours of time for my me time, getting my lashes done. I actually haven't gotten my nails done all year. I've been trying to give them a little bit of a break, but I'm gonna get them done before we go on vacation. And I think that's like the best thing. I just need an hour or two of me time every couple of weeks and that just kind of gives me my sanity back and allows me to be the best and most productive version of myself. I'm Nurse Liz. What are your tips for growing your YouTube channel? Did you post elsewhere or just consistently post and slowly gain? Also, do you have a job other than YouTube? Thanks, loving your channel. Yes, I have a job other than YouTube. Um, and I would say collaborating with other people. I think that has always been where I've seen my channel grow is because then we get to kind of get to know each other's audiences and I think collaborating really, really helps. And I have just been posting really, really consistently. I think there's something to committing and making sure that you're posting regularly. Mrs. Mia Winchester, how did you get P to sleep in her own crib? Did you use the cry it out method struggling with my 10 month old? We used a controlled version of the cry it out method. I actually did a video on this back in December, I believe. Um, it's basically where you still soothe them, you just don't pick them up. And I would have my husband do it, not me, so that she wasn't smelling my breast milk if you are nursing. Um, because if she would smell me, she would freak out like 10 times worse than if he would actually go in there and just kind of soothe her back. Um, and it took us about a week and honestly it has stuck. The only time we've had regressions if, if it was teething or cold, but watch the video and I think it could help you because it's not, I think, as horrifying feeling as the actual cry it out method. Sydney Ree, a lot of people have been informing me, more like scaring me about how if I want to be a lawyer, it would be very difficult to spend quality time with my kids if I were to one day have them. What's your opinion on that and what advice do you have for mothers or potential mothers who have exceptionally busy careers but want children? No one would ever say that to a man, so don't let anyone tell that to you. That's how I feel about it. Just like people saying, well, I don't want to apply for a promotion. I've had women on my team say like, well, I want to have kids, so I don't want to apply for the promotion. It's more responsibility. No one will tell a dude who's becoming a dad not to apply for the promotion. Girl, you do it. Um, and my battery light is flashing. So <laughs> I have to say, there's a question that keeps popping up. It's not just one person. Will there be baby number three? And I'm sorry, I know a lot of you thought that that box could have been baby number three. I did not mean for that to fool some of you. I was drinking wine the day before, so I thought it was really obvious. Um, I still would like to have baby number three. I have to just make sure that my husband gets on board with baby number three. So I'm hopeful. Send your prayers, send, send your persuasive vibes my way so that I can persuade the husband into baby number three. But thank you so much for all of these questions. I'm really sorry if I didn't get to answer yours. I will definitely do more Q and A's if you guys want me to. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments that you'd like more Q and A's. Make sure you're subscribed, have that bell notification button clicked so you know every time I post a new video, I've got so many good ones coming up this spring and summer, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye loves. So why don't you just meet me in the middle, in the middle